My name is Kima Williams. I'm the coordinator of the uh, music business program here at Columbia College in Chicago. Uh, I actually came here in 1985 when I saw an ad for a music um, director for a show, and I met Bill Russo. I said to Bill that I've never music directed, but I like what you're doing, and I would love to come by and try it out. The one great thing about Columbia was it seems that they were into innovation, into trying new things. So Bill said, well, come on in, let's give it a shot, and maybe you can learn as you go. So I came in to do that uh, pro, uh, I mean that program was called Talking to the Sun. This is back in 1985, I believe it was. So I sort of learned how to do music direction. Um, I came to the uh, Columbia College initially as a um, graduate of Berklee College of Music and Composition and a master's degree in um, management. And prior to actually coming to Columbia College, I was the coordinator of the commercial music program at Sherwood Conservatory. So I came over I did that show, and then Bill said, you know, you did pretty well. Why don't, how would you like to do some teaching? So I said, sure, what would I teach? Introduction to theory. And I said, fine, I would love to teach a little introduction to theory. So I started to teach introduction to theory, and I noticed from talking with the students that there was a sense of um, wanting. They were like sponges. They wanted a lot of information. I think this came out of a lot that they didn't have to take these SATs and they just sort of came in and they, everybody could try their wares. They could try things out. And that's the one thing I liked about Columbia. So I started working in the uh, music department and I developed a couple of classes there. The classes I developed were more connected to management because that was my background. So I was teaching management kinds of things within the classroom environment. Then finally, at one point in 1996, I realized that the music business program here at Columbia could probably have a better uh, kind of managerial um, connection to the music. They were doing music management, but it was more just somebody who would come in off the street who was working in the field and just sort of talk to the students about what they did. There was no pedagogical approach. So when I came over to the music uh, business program in 1996 with Dennis Rich, um, I started to look at what the program was and said, well, I think we should change this. Maybe this would work. All of that was coming from my experiences as opposed to reading a book. So I said, you know, based on my experiences, this is what I think we might need. This may work better, and the students may be able to understand concepts a little bit better if we can put it in this format instead of that format. And he said, oh, that's a great job. And so things started to, I mean, that was a great idea. So the program started to grow from that, that perspective. So now um, I was, at that point, just coordinating the production. And then uh, in 2004, I actually started to coordinate the entire music uh, business uh, curriculum. One of the things I... I've tried to um, make sure that my students understood was, I mean my, my teachers, was that there was a philosophical approach to the, the classroom. So that we're not just trying to teach um, how to get uh, an A or how to um, be successful in the classroom. We wanted the student, I specifically wanted the student to have a, uh, an approach to what they were going to do with the industry from an innate quality as opposed to something they would think about and then execute. But it was a natural thing for them. So in order to, for them to have a natural approach to being successful or taking advantage of opportunities, there's certain things that has to happen pedagogically. If we have a test and you say you take a test and you get a grade and then that grade means that you are then validated as being knowledgeable, that won't work. And that was my philosophy, to get that out of the teachers. That is not about the grade any longer. It's about the quality of the individual. So how can we do that within an academic setting? So what I would do is sit down with the faculty and talk about my philosophy. And one of those would be that I don't believe in the concept or the cliche that is who you know, um, uh, your, uh, what your resume says, um, um, uh, what experience you have had. The industry has changed so rapidly that anybody can read a manual now and be an expert in Pro Tools or be an expert in this or be an expert at that. Anybody can go to Guitar Center and spend five or six hundred dollars and they are a record company. So what does that mean? There's an aesthetic that's missing and so we're trying to emphasize the aesthetic within the concentration so that students are not thinking only about their focus of task. I am a hip-hop guy and I don't care about the rest of that. Instead, I am interested in being the best that I can be in my field, but also understand everything that's surrounding it because all of it has an impact. So in order to do that, I have uh, conversations with the students about how they're doing in class. Then I have conversations with my faculty 
about how they think the students are doing, what do the students need, and more importantly, would you hire that student? And if you would not, what would you change? And then let's do that within the classroom. So the, the teachers are no longer saying, well, that's my job. I come in at 9 o'clock, I teach, and then I go home. They realize that there is a connection to that innate quality that is the student that they're teaching, that we want them to be successful out in the field. And the way to do that is by creating a value structure that's based on getting some plays on time, uh, attention to detail. And uh, one story, uh, an anecdote that I always use for the students to fully understand is that we all, and we have to, prioritize the decision-making process that we all go to individually. And so does the student. So they're going to prioritize within the music industry in a, any opportunity that they have as to what is important and what is not. However, you can't do that because what's important to them will not be important to the, or may be more important to the producer. So what I want the student to do and what I want the teachers to emphasize to the students is that you must always be at the top of your game no matter what area you are at and then not prioritize but just meet the requirements of whatever your responsibilities are. So in order to make sure that the faculty does that, of course I converse with them about their knowledge, what they know, what they think the students should know, and then through that we create the lesson plan. I, I just don't say here's the lesson plan. We talk about it. We talk about what we want the students to have. Most important is measurable outcomes. We cannot just say you take this class therefore you are. We say you take this class now let's see where you are and what you need to do to improve. Regardless of the A, you need to improve in this area. In order for a student to be successful in the music industry, uh, I don't feel like they have to have a, um, a, a working knowledge of the arts in general. I think it's important for them to understand critical thought. And when you look at critical thought, it is going to connect you to the arts inevitably. You know, I mean, it's just going to happen. So, uh, you know, every once in a while, I, I remember when I was in the music department, and uh, Bill Russell wanted me to take piano lessons. You know, I'm a guitar player, I don't want to take piano. He said, oh, it'd be good if you take piano, you'd be able to write. I said, yeah, but I just don't have time. But you've got to take piano. I don't want to take piano lessons. You know, you, but you should, you know, you know he's, he, he. And so I said to him, I said, he said, how can it hurt you? And I said, you're right. It won't hurt, it will help. However, if I'm a conductor of an orchestra, I, could, I should learn the viola. It was not going to hurt me, it would help me. I should learn the percussion. It's not going to hurt me, it's going to help me. So, you know, it's all relative. Of course it's going to help me, but I have to manage the time and so forth. So, of course, I forgot what my thought was, why I was saying that, but what was I talking about? Um, oh, the student, right. So they, they, they need to have an understanding of art as a form of uh, expression and then understand art as a form of uh, commerce. And I think that's important, and this is where we have our, we have to have a, a, a significant balancing um, uh, relationship with our students. Because I hate to say the word product when you talk about the music industry and when you talk about art, but it is in fact a product. But we can also look at it as artistic commerce and that we are engaging in a transaction that's connected to art. And that kind of balance would take a student away from this black and white, well, it's either a product or I'm an artist. I'm going to write for my heart. I'm not going to write for that. But if we put it in the middle and you know, say it's artistic commerce and there, there's a paradigm that's set up to allow that to happen without, uh, as they say, um, uh, giving it away. You know? So um, I, I think it is important for them to understand the visual arts, dance, and so forth. My, my background is in uh, uh, many of the arts. From the classroom perspective, I want the students, because they come into the environment without the product aspect, and they come into it immediately with the um, right brain concept, that it is art, and my art is not for sale, but yet they're selling, they're trying to sell as many CDs as they can. So the only thing I want them to do is to know about it. I don't want to say one way is right, one way is wrong, or um, uh, it, is, it is a product or isn't a product. But if you are, have decided that I am going to start a record label, then you have to make a decision, is that record label based on the business model or the ar artist model? And there's two different models. The business mar model is profit-oriented, and that is the reason that you put a business together is to make profit for your stockholders. 
So the student wants to understand that. So if they say, yes, that's what I want to do, then my next question is, so now you have to devise and put together a product. Yes, that's, that's right. Then my next question is, what is your market demand? Well, my market demands my music. Well, how do you know? Well, because I like it. Well, you like it, but they, you know, who, you know, then they start to understand what it is as opposed to me. Here it is, here it is, here it is, don't do that, do, do, don't do that. So through questioning and uh, provi providing devil's advocate types of approaches, the students are better, to, uh, un better able to make their own decisions about what is commerce and what is product and where they fit. One of the ways is who why are you writing music? These are, again, this is questions. Why are you writing music? Then they will, depending on their answer, will depend on my next question or my next response. But let's just assume that why are you writing music? Well, because I like to write. Um, who do you want to hear this music? Your mom, your dad, your brother, and your sister? Well, no, I want everybody to hear it. And then, so you sure everybody. So the country and western, well, not the country and western people, they're not going to like my hip hop thing. Well, then, so only hip hop type or, yeah. And once they hear it, what do you want them to do? Well, I want them to buy it, or you want them to come to your concert. Well, I want them to come to my concert. So we continually have that, that, that uh, dialogue. I, it, it's just so important to me that uh, the students, or e even people that I, I come in contact with, have their own uh, assessment of how they look at uh, what this industry is, what, it, what is the product, what is uh, my art? Because then they're going to make some decisions about that. They're going to decide, I'm going to put a record label together that is for this purpose. And one question I ask, I said, well, you ready to do country music? Oh, no way. I said, well, then you don't want to do a record label. Because a record label is about profit. And if country music is going to bring you profit, then you're going to put a country band on your label. Now, we do understand also that you can have a record label that says, our mission is jazz music. Now, that's fine. You know, now your product has been targeted. But then you're going to go out and look for what the consumer is asking for in jazz music, not what you're asking for. So if you like Miles Davis, but your consumer likes Kenny G, you're going to go for Kenny G and not be thinking about, well, Kenny G is not jazz. No, no, it doesn't. For the consumer, it. So my again, the point is to make sure that the student creates his own answers to what is commerce, what is the product, where do I fit, how am I going to take what I do as an artist and provide it to uh, either a consumer or to my own. You know, one of the things I did recently with, with uh, many students is establish the fact that you can have a record label without having a, uh, have it be a product that's for sale to a consumer by saying that I am doing this as a form of expression and uh, I would like to do it again. I tell them about my record label. I only, when, when I release an album, the purpose of releasing that album is to make enough money to do another album. <laughs> you know, and that was, that's, that's it. I'm not looking for a profit. So I said that can be a business model. Technology moves rapidly. Every 15 or 20 minutes, something is different than what it was 15 or 20 minutes ago as it relates to the music industry and new technology and new things. So, of course, I stay abreast of those things. I read about it. I understand it. I talk to the students and ask them what are they doing and how are they doing it, why are they doing it, and how does it impact on you and your dreams and, and your aspirations. I talk to uh, my faculty, what are you doing outside of school and how do you see the connection in school and what do you think the students need to have to be able to do what you're doing out there or for you to be able to work with them and so forth. Now once I have all of that information, I look at the classes that I offer and I look at the teachers that I have and I look at what is needed out in the industry. And then once I see that and I see one, are we meeting those needs for the industry and are students getting that? Can they leave here and be able to function in that environment that I've researched, that I've asked questions about? And if they can't, then I come back, I look at what we have, and then I adjust. I adjust the teachers, I adjust the, um, 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 uh, the, the pedagogical approach. You know, we had a record label here, and that record label's been the only student-run, not the only, but the, uh, uh, the first student-run label that started in 1982 by Erwin Steinberg and Chuck Suber. That label started in 1982, and up until 2000, and what is it, 7, 2005, they had a budget of $4,500. This is for a grad, about 20 students, and the undergrad. $4,500. And every semester, the students would get together and go through a pretentious approach to what it is to be in a record label. And most country, most, there's a lot of organizations that have their, their record labels, but the students truly are not able to function outside of the academic paradigm. So I said, I talked to the people in the industry, I talked to the students, and I talked to the faculty. We weren't servicing our students. So I went to the board and I said, look, this is not right. 
we can't pretend that we're telling them how to run a label and then they can't go out and do it if they don't understand it. So I said, we need a, a bigger budget. We don't have the money. We don't have the money. And I fought and I fought and I always bring up the fact that it is about the students. It's not about me. It's about the students and what they want. So now we have a $35,000 budget. That budget is because we were able to show through um, uh, um, research, talking to the industry, talking to the students, and talking to the faculty that this is what's needed in order for them to understand how to be successful when opportunities come their way. So through that process, everything I do is like that. So I think that's how I'm able to administrate our program so that it grows. Right now, it is growing by leaps and bounds. Right now, I just got a call two days ago. I'm going out to LA next week because our students, who does a program called Semester in LA, uh, it started maybe four years ago. Uh, we sent them out there. I started a program that was for, for producers. I know a lot of producers out in LA, and I said, look, I want my students to come out and not do an internship, but I want them to be your assistant. In other words, I want them to assist you in a commercial product. I don't want you to sort of have them be there. It's not an internship. It's not a shadowing. It's truly they're going to assist you. Now, I'm going to interview each and every one to make sure they're quality individuals. Not that they've had experience in producing, but they are quality individual because they're going to suck it all up anyway. And they go, okay, sure. So I did this and we started this program. Then they had a semester in LA, pro semester in LA program here at Columbia College. And they said, well, why don't you see if you can connect what you're doing to the semester in LA program? So I moved my program to the semester in LA program. One of the things, and what the semester in, LA, semester in LA program does is it puts our students in an environment of Los Angeles. And then in Los Angeles, um, professionals from the industry come and they uh, teach our class. So they come from the sound stage and then they talk to our class and then they go back to the sound stage. Our students, our producer students, are music supervisors mainly, and most of them are musicians. So music supervisors, producers, music editors, they come and they speak to our students. Uh, what's very interesting, and I'm seeing the success in a major way with our program, and I think better than any program anywhere, is that these professionals said to me and to the instructors, these Columbia College students seem to get it. He said, we get all these other colleges that come to us, and the students come, and we do our little, our, our little thing, and it's a field trip or it's a workshop, but your students are asking critical thought-oriented questions. And I'm like, thank you, because that's the, the philosophy of what we're, we're trying to do here. Now, to make that even more relevant is to, uh, last semester, the students got an opportunity to write music for Lifetime. So they wrote something, and they said, oh, great, thank you very much, but we did, we're, uh, we're not going to use it, but that was really good. But the reason they got the opportunity was because our students were so grounded in understanding the larger picture of what the industry was about. This year, the students did the same thing for Lionsgate, a movie that's coming out in January. And they said, right, uh, could you, you want you guys go ahead and write something. They wrote something, and they got two tracks is actually going to be in a major release. And it's going to be those six students in that one group will get the credit on the screen. Now, that's huge for my department. But even more huge is the fact that that philosophy, that, that concept of attention to detail and not about did you get an A in this class is relevant. And it has shown through this process, I mean, through the fact of the success for these students, that it is, in fact, uh, a, a, a way to work in the pedagogical academic uh, setting. Two Saturdays ago, I went to the, the parents' um, um, meeting, and the parents come in, and I stand up, and I say, there are no jobs in this industry at all. You know, I always like the little silence. And they look at each other and look at them. I said, there are no jobs. There are hundreds of thousands of opportunities. What we do, and, I, and I'm telling you, it works for the parents. All of them, come, I get three or four that come back on their day off to visit and to talk about their, our program. I said, but what we do, or what, we, what there is in this industry, are hundreds of thousands of opportunities. What we do is to prepare your child to take advantage of those opportunities. Now, of course, some of them are going to ask the normal questions. What's the percentage of placement that you have and so forth? And I said, well, it's not re the industry is not set up for a placement. I said, if there were jobs, it would be a classified ad that said, need producer to produce Madonna's next album. I said, you're not going to ever see that. But what you will see is a student who has been totally prepared in the production process, understands um, uh, licensing, understands the copyright issues, and when somebody interviews them, have a conversation, and they can speak to those things, 
they're going to say, I want that person on my team. They don't even know what they want them to do. But they want them on this team because it's a quality individual. It's not that he got an A or that he has a degree on the wall. Because I've never seen an interview in this, in, in this industry other than to open a door to get in for the interview where someone says, what's your degree in? You know, so uh, the parents seem to get it. And I think they, they get it because myself, as well as uh, the teachers that we have that will speak to them, are sincere. And we also tell them, and one of the things I've always found about parents is every single parent believes in the passion of their child. So we use that word, and I do, and I say, if your child is passionate and he is directed and he is focused, which we will help them to do, he's going to find success because success will attack passion. It's just, it's just automatic. You know, and they go, oh, okay, you know. If I had to uh, speak to um, someone who has decided that they want music, and I speak music as an artist, uh, to be their life, I would, and, and I say this now, is that you have to be focused. So many artists, uh, so many younger f folks say, I want to do everything. And I said, that's fine. You can do everything, but be focused. And ways I, I say that with them is that you, it's like if you're in California and you plan to go to New York, you don't just get in a car and then start the car and then start driving. You have a direction and you say, New York is that way. I'm going to take a highway this, I'm going to have that. And you lay out the map and then you start in your car and then you start going. Now, while you're on the way, you're going to get to Oklahoma and you're going to see an exit sign that says boom, 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 boom. And you're going to say, you know, check that out. You drive over there, you kind of get out of your car, you go, yeah, that's cool. You get back on your road, continue to New York. Now you get to Illinois, you do the same kind of thing, but wait a minute, I like that. And you end up in, New in Illinois for 15 years. But you were always on your way to New York. Now you're going to decide, I'm going to get back and go back to New York, or you're going to decide, I like this. And I say that because as a composer, that's where I started. I, also, I mean, I started as, a, as an artist. The only reason I got into music was because I went to the library. I grew up in Hawaii. I went to the library, and I was going to pick out the Arizona School of Art because I really love to be an artist. So I get up there. I get Arizona School of Art, get myself coffee. Well, not coffee. I was a young kid. But I got, and I sit down. I open the book. It says Berkeley, you know, A.B., Berkeley College of Music. I'm going, Berkeley College of Music? What, what's that? Because back in that day, you know, a, a college of music? You know, and I'm looking at that, and I said, well, why don't I give that a shot? I like to play the guitar. I gave him a call, I auditioned, I got in, and my whole career in music started, as opposed to my career in, uh, in art, you know. But I, I love art, I love web design, I love a lot of different things that I'm involved in. Um, but I'm focused on composition. That's my focus, that's what I do all the time, that's what I think about all the time, and that's what I try to tell that young student. Be passionate, stay true to your passion, stay focused, and then all the things that you're hoping for and wishing for are going to come your way. It, it, it just can't. Barriers will only be knocked down by passion. You can't knock barriers down by uh, just saying, gosh, I hope that goes away. But if you're passionate, things just kind of get out of your way. Thanks very much for talking to me. All right.